Hello, this is Mr. Fleming, and it is January 12th, and this is for my Art 2 class. And in Art 2, we were talking about how to integrate text into our artwork. And we had a project in which I wanted you to take a poem and bring the text into it. And you can see this is a very nice example here, and it really is a very good piece. But look closely at the lettering, and it's not that it's not a good piece, but you can see how the marker was thick, and that I'm losing some details, and I'm losing some spacing, the space in between the E, the H is touching the S. Although it's legible, it's a great piece, this would not be considered a graphic piece. Graphic art is a very specific type of art, so is typography. Um, this is another very good piece, very thought-provoking piece. It's, a, it's, it's one I've done. But if you look at the lettering, even though the lettering is pretty good on that green field, I'm beginning to lose a lot of the detail, and I am not going to inspire someone to come in here and read it. Text is very difficult in art. It really is. You have to assume the person has to read it instantaneously and move on. It's not an, uh, an article. It's not a magazine. you got to pay attention to it. Now... We talked about placement of our artwork and how to get that placement done. Um, I did a rough here. Let me just go through the project very quickly. We did talk, we need to choose, uh, we're going horizontal or vertical. We did our thumbnails, and these are our roughs, and you guys should know the process pretty well right now. And this is a rough I did for this one. And we talked about the spacing of the letters and the spacing between the lines of text. That has to be part of your design concept. If you're going to put text into it, you really want to make sure you know with the spacing between the letters and between the lines, even if you're going to freehand it, it's just you have to know your audience. Now, we talked about that in class, and I want to make sure we do understand very clearly what we're talking about here. All right, so um, in the cartoon I have, it says, OK, Boomer. But before I do that, I want to know what typography is. Typography is just using letters, shapes, and symbols in a very particular way that allows the reader to in, take in the information in a very sy symptomatic way, in a very visually pleasing way. Um, tracking is the overall spacing or groupings of letters or text, and you can tell that's very important, especially in books and magazines and websites now, of course. Um, Letting is the space between the lines, and that's going to be consistent. You don't want text touching each other. Kerning is the space between the letters, okay? Now, this vocabulary went over in school, uh, so I'm not really too concerned, but please take a look at these three rows here. Um, what we have is three different fonts, okay? And this one over here is Comic Sian. It's usually the comic style, the comic font style that's very um, popular within comic books. It's it's not so much anymore, but it's almost ubiquitous 10, 15 years ago. It's changing now a little bit. Um, this is one of the many fonts you can do. In class, I talked about Arial and Helvetica being very easy to read. And those are more and more the type that you want to see on um, websites, magazines, if you want people to actually read an article as opposed to be impressed by the text. Um, over here is Joker Man. It's just a much more stylized type of font. But in all the fonts, you can see the spacing between the letters, between the lines, are really very, very symmetrical and consistent. That's important. This is not a class in typography. But if you, and we should use um, words and letters in our artwork, we need to be conscious of how the design and composition is maintained throughout our piece. So keep that in mind. Now, if you take a look at my pieces, there's two I got done. Because you didn't have to add text to this one. We just finished up the project, um, and that was just one of the tools we could use. But my goal really was to use um, line and shape to create movement. Line and shape are elements of art. Movement is a principle of art. And that's what we're trying to do. So here is my thumbnail, and here is my rough, and there is my final draft right there. Keep in mind with my final draft, one of the things I'm trying to show you guys is... We did this many times already in all my classes, but I want to, um, to emphasize a little bit, and that's called atmospheric perspective. So I've got my character, I've got my lettering done, but please pay attention also to the gradation of tone, the blue to fades to a white, the dark green fades to a light green. That 
just alone by itself creates the space. It creates atmosphere. Now, whether it's visually pleasing or successful, that's a different story. But we do want to know these techniques to improve our art. So that was one aspect of it. We did use four quadrants. We can use a cartoon. And we have a figure very far away. He moves into the picture plane. And then finally, he jumps out of the picture plane. Over here, we also have movement, but it's in one frame. I did do a color study. I'm playing with colors to see which ones I want. This is the one I chose down over here, and this is my execution. I am not using black at all. I am simply using color. Even this piece, you always want to show your work. You want to show how you got there, and that's what I'm looking for in your sketchbook. It doesn't need to be this big. I... I I like working big, and I also wanted to have a piece that was big enough that could be seen on the camera, and I think that one's fairly successful. But you should have a piece done today, and I'm going to do another video for uh, another project. But please check out the LMS. Please keep your sketchbook going. Um, I'm hoping to see you before the end of the uh, quarter and the, the end of the, second sem the first semester, but I'm not sure that's going to happen. I don't know. Um, I will do my best to show you techniques that mean something to you to improve your artwork. And I'm going to try to compress the project so that we can kind of work a little bit more sh smaller projects at a better pace. And that way we can always do something fresh, okay? So um, I look forward to seeing your artwork. And please check out the next video for our next project. Make art because art won't make itself.